What if one day you wake up and decide from now on I will train six times a week, two workouts a day, non-stop for a year? Do you know how your body will look like end of the year? How much strength you will gain? How that training frequency will affect your life? In this video, I will share with you positive and negative outcomes of training like a CrossFit athlete and sacrifices I have made to follow this plan for one year. I will also give you details about my training program, sleep schedule and nutrition. The biggest challenge of being a CrossFit athlete is the fact that you need to be a civis 9. It simply means you need to become a person who has a broad spectrum of skills and competencies. Your endurance must be at top level because you're gonna run, row, ski, cycle for long distances. You must be good at lifting weights, especially on squats and deadlifts because they will be the foundation of your weightlifting exercises. You better like gymnastics because you will be tested by every single movement which requires high skill and mobility. And the hardest thing about CrossFit, you never know how you're gonna be tested. It could be a combination of all of these or something you have never practiced before. That's why I need a training program which is specifically designed for athletes. Those days I was impressed by strength level of female Norwegian athletes. Some of them are even stronger than me, even if I'm known as a strong person compared to men average. When I look at the training plan of these female Norwegian athletes, I find out almost all of them using the same training program, Kreger training. What makes this program different than others is its endurance-focused approach. And that was one of my biggest weaknesses. Another weakness of mine was weightlifting. Even if my reps look explosive and I look like I know what I'm doing, it's not heavy enough to compete with athletes in elite level. This is just another reason for me to choose Krieger training. Because I know morning sessions always start with some weightlifting. I thought I can gain strength in weightlifting and improve my endurance at the same time. Well. I kinda did, but I will talk more about this in negative outcomes part. Do you know how many hours you should train per week to become a CrossFit athlete? My training was 5 days a week and a day of optional recovery workout. The AM session usually takes around 2 hours. In these sessions, I was focusing on weightlifting for 4 days a week, followed by a strength session with one of the compound lifts and some accessories after. I was practicing gymnastics only one day a week because it was already one of my strengths. Of course, one training session a day is never enough. PM session takes around another two hours. For two days, I was doing endurance workouts where my heart rate stays around zone two for a long period of time. I was only using ergo machines in these endurance sessions. Two days a week, I was doing CrossFit type of workouts where you need to combine different exercises, rest minimum, and maximize your work output. For one day, I was doing threshold workouts where my heart rate stays around zone four till the end. So total time I spent to complete two training sessions a day was around four hours. But you know what? This is still not enough. To maximize performance and keep exercising without getting injured, I must make time for mobility. I was doing some activation work and mobility exercises before the AM session and I was doing passive stretches after PM session. They are not only good for reducing risk of injury, but also they help you to spend less energy in certain exercises. So I was spending at least one hour for mobility every training day. When you sum all these hours, it equals to five hours a day if you train for five days then it's 25 hours a week here are a few examples from my workout history you can also see how many calories I burn per session which brings us to the next thing that you need to manage very professionally nutrition this fireplace representing your body when you train like a CrossFit athlete doesn't matter what you throw there they turn into ashes immediately I was eating whatever I want whenever I want and still losing weight but to keep training like an athlete you need to learn how to eat like an athlete constantly losing weight is not ideal because nobody can sustain that type of training in calorie deficit for a long period of time. So I decide to calculate my macro needs. My body burns 2000 calories a day. I make my living by providing online coaching and making YouTube videos. So except my BMI and training, I was burning around 300 calories every day. In training days, according to my Apple Watch, I was burning around 1800 calories. I know that Apple Watch shows a little bit high numbers just to motivate the users. That's why I reduced this number to 1400 calories for every training session. My daily calorie needs 
need was 3700 calories just to maintain my weight. My protein intake was 2.5 grams per kg, so that was 212 grams of protein. My carb and fat intake were 350 and 200 grams respectively. In total, I was getting around 4000 calories. What if I tell you after 4 hours of training, no doms, I don't have soreness at all. That's how a good recovery rate should look like. And it is not possible without proper nutrition and sleep. Last time I sleep for 8 hours, I was in high school I guess. I must admit that I'm a bit weird when it comes to sleeping. I can't sleep if the room is too hot or too cold. I can't sleep with someone, I can't sleep with clothes. If everything is perfect, then I can sleep only for six hours. Is this enough for recovery? Well, I never feel tired during the day and I don't yawn even for a single time. Here is something you must know if you want to fall asleep while doing two workouts in a day. Be careful about when you finish your PM session. If you postpone it to later in the afternoon, it may affect your ability to fall asleep because even if you feel so tired, your heart doesn't slow down enough to let you sleep. So try to finish that PM session around 3 PM or maybe 4 PM. That's gonna give your heart enough time to slow down. Now let's talk about positive and negative outcomes of training like a CrossFit athlete. 1. Freedom of eating whatever you want. For one year, I eat pancakes every morning. That was incredible. 2. A nice looking body. Abs, vessels, pump. You're gonna get everything you want. 3. A peaceful life. Think about it. You wake up, eat whatever you want, then go to the gym. Only thing you need to do, playing with weights while you're listening your favorite podcast or playlist. End of two sessions, you know that you're more hardworking than 99% of the world. People who see you working hard, sometimes they come across to you and talk with you and ask your secrets. Knowing that you put hard effort on something every day is so satisfactory. And your psychology feels that. Four lots of knowledge and experience. If you're a CrossFit trainer, training like an athlete for a while would help you to differentiate yourself from other trainers. In this journey, you learn many things about moving efficiently, strategy, training systems, progression drills, recovery, injury management, and many more. These were advantages. Now let's talk about disadvantages of training like a CrossFit athlete. One, not having enough energy to cook food. If you have a supportive girlfriend who loves to cook for you, you're sitting on a gold mine. I did not have at that moment. So I had to outsource my meals because after all those training sessions, I have literally no desire to cook food or do shopping in grocery store. Two, less desire to join social activities and meet with friends. You must spend most of your time in the gym. After training, you will just feel tired and hungry. You would still feel motivated to meet with some of your best friends, but not with all of them, especially the ones who are more active in night and invite you to clubs and bars. Be ready to lose them. But don't worry, you will find friends as crazy as you in the gym. They will be your new friends. 4. It's not the most efficient way to gain strength. Let's be honest, especially for advanced players, CrossFit is not the most efficient way to gain strength. You cannot avoid interference effects if you are combining strength training with high-intensity workouts. A good program and good coaching help you to minimize it, but still it's gonna limit your strength gains. 5. You need to be more mindful about how you're gonna feed your brain. If you don't wanna end up by being someone who can only talk about CrossFit, you need to listen some podcast or read your favorite book during your zone 2 cardio sessions. 6. Be ready for small injuries. Not because of CrossFit makes people got injured. Because of training like an athlete has nothing to do with health. As an athlete, your aim is maximizing your performance, pushing limits of your body when it's necessary. You can do CrossFit and be healthier than most of the people. But once you say, I will train like an athlete, doesn't matter running, bodybuilding, or powerlifting. Small injuries will find you one way or another. A good physiotherapist would help you to deal with these small injuries. Don't try to figure out everything on your own. Get some support when it's needed. I hope my journey provides you some valuable insights about training like an athlete and I hope you learned something useful from this video. If you do and want to say thank you to me, please like the video. For those who ask about new episode of Dietitian vs Trainer, new episode is on the way. We're trying to move out from Bali right now. That's why our schedule is a little bit hectic nowadays. If you haven't watched any of them yet, here is a good one.
We discuss debatable topics with my girlfriend. One of us become voice of science, another one becomes voice of feelings. I hope you enjoy that. See you there.